Hello everyone, Star Wars Unlimited showed new cards today and in general I wanted to make a series of videos talking about new cards, maybe some Star Wars Unlimited uh, news or maybe card prices and so on, just like a you know a series that you can always go back and listen to the, some what is happening new in the Star Wars Unlimited world. And today we're going to be talking about the new cards that were released, so just let's jump, on, uh, jump in straight into the new cards. First one that was um, shown is the new smuggle mechanic. So they showed four cards we're going to talk a little bit about each of them each of them have a, a same mechanic so it's a card that goes into a resource and then can be essentially played from the resource raw without getting the information first that it's even in there right because smuggling right so it kind of makes sense so first let's talk about the idea of the mechanic it denies a lot of informations uh towards uh, the opponent so they can never know even if you have zero cards on hand for some reason you're still going to be able to play something from your resource row because you just have to play the smuggle cost right so how does it work is like for example here this vig vigilant pursuit craft costs normally a five mana and it's a three five ship whip sentinel that is a blue aspect now um for smuggle cost of seven right with the blue aspect so if you don't have a blue base or a blue leader it's gonna cost nine but typically it's gonna cost seven you're gonna be able to play this card when it's being a resource so then the ship is being played for that cost of the resource and uh then you replace the resource with the top card from your deck so essentially you don't lose mana as well and you just play this card essentially for two mana more uh, two resources more than its initial cost but you play it from the resource raw now that is essentially an incredibly powerful mechanic i'm not saying that particularly on this card but it's an incredibly po uh, powerful mechanic because it allows you to um just essentially have a little bit less decision making what to uh, or like easier decision making what to put into the resource raw because then you don't have to think oh well, i will not be able to play this card anymore Right, so essentially, you have like a little bit of um, less uh, less hard decision making when it, when it comes to what to put into the resource raw because those cards can still be played, and this benefits the decks that either need specific answers for specific cards, so you can resource uh, a specific like maybe removal card or some or like a trick card into the resource role when you don't need it and then play it when it's actually useful because there's the board state that you want to punish for some, for some uh, you know, reason. Or aggro decks, because aggro decks can just like literally just maybe go into like some one drop zerg mode, drop X amount of cards, leave a hand open right i'm looking at you ig88 and then play cards from the smuggle mechanic because essentially you're building a second hand and that's going to be something that we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, in the in the next cards because vigilant pursuit craft is like okay but it's not not something that is going to be incredibly i think useful in general it's a decent card right but next one is going to be the private crew and this one is a 222 and uh that has no effect unless you smuggle it for sixth cost and the green aspect, right? Remember, you can also use those cards even if you don't have the aspect color of it. So you can play, I don't know, red yellow and have still private crew in your deck, and you're just gonna put it always into a, a resource row, and then you can for eight mana you can use this experience token. Right? Sorry, you can use this as a as the give ex free experience tokens to this unit. Uh, so it goes out as an 855. Not saying this is the correct decision. I'm just saying it's a possibility and you have to make like think about that when building decks. Some cards with smuggle mechanic might be good enough to play when played off aspect, right? So private crew is like it's okay, right? It's if it had the ability to give experience tokens to other units, it would be insane, but it doesn't. It only gives the experience tokens to this unit. So it's like a 2-drop that you can play a 2, but then it's pretty bad, because why would you play a 2-2-2, two, 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 right? And uh, when you put it into resource raw, well then for 6 mana I have a 5-5. Five, five. Nothing particularly exciting about this card. But now we go into a area of cards that are really exciting. The next two cards that I'm going to talk about are... I would say a little bit scary, and we'll see how that goes, uh, because this uh, this is like another 
ECL, but in the form of a smuggle card, right? For one resource, you can play a unit and give it an ambush to any unit. This doesn't have any kind of restriction. It can be a ground unit. It can be a uh, space unit. It can cost one. It can cost 10. It doesn't matter. You can give it ambush. Now that itself is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Just think about it this way. We know all we all know ECL is, is just very good. Let's just say it that way. I'm not gonna say broken. I'm just gonna say it's very good. Maybe too good. Right? And timely intervention is kind of like ECL in a form card, a form of a card, but it can actually be played from the resource raw for two resources if you have the green aspect. So not only your opponent has to like kind of pay attention if ECL was used or not, now you'll have to also think, oh no, he can actually give ambush to any card in his deck just by paying one or maybe two if he has this in his resource raw. And this, that, it's an additional option. When, when you play a ramp deck, you have essentially building up mana faster. So this changes the way that you're going to play against green decks because you're going to always have to think about this card being available for them and it's it's going to be incredibly tough to play around this because you shouldn't play around cards that you don't know if they're even there but that's the mechanic so i'm a little bit i'm a little bit scared because of how smuggle can be used in this game um because i was hoping <clears throat> that smuggle mechanics smuggle cards are going to be put face up so you always know what are the options but then it kind of ruins the idea of smuggling, right? When someone knows about it, it's not really smuggling. But you get my point. Like right now, you are you're you're gonna have to memorize all of the smuggle cards, even off, off aspect. And sometimes you might overthink what's gonna happen in the game or what can happen on the game in the game, and you're gonna play around stuff that might not matter. And that is a problematic thing in card games in general. Hope I'm wrong, but Timely Intervention and the next card are going to be incredibly powerful. So, uh, yeah, and remember, green is a ramp deck, so you're building up, uh, building up mana, and because of this, you're going to be able to use Timely Intervention earlier or, um, or uh, earlier or later, like, without really having an, a, a downside of it, right? Uh, the, the actual downside might be resourcing something from the top of the deck that you didn't want to resource but you can maybe resource a card that actually has smuggle also think about that like what if i play timely intervention from the resource row but then on the top of the deck there's another timely intervention and that goes into the resource row as well i can use that as well right in the next turn or even the same one depending on what's happening in the game also this changes a little bit like for example um you want to play your steadfast battalion and then the other copies of Stethevice Battalion that you have in the in the deck typically are just being resourced. And you don't really want to play them anymore, right? But in this case, those Stethevice Battalions might actually be kept. Because you can still use them for seven resources with this from the resource row, and they suddenly have ambush again. They might not have the leader effect because your leader might be already dead, but it also changes the dynamics a little bit when the ECL is already used but you're able to play your leader, for example, on six resources with timely intervention from the hand and the Stadfast Battalion from the hand. Like it changes a little bit of the dynamic of what can be happening with the Stadfast Battalion, right? So this card potentially has an incredible effect of, of, on the entire metagame. Now, next card I'm very excited about as well because it's for the aggro decks, typically I would say. As you, of course, it's red, but it's also off aspect when it comes to the smuggle effect, right? So you're gonna have to pay three mana, three resources for its smuggle effect. This is a upgrade that gives plus two plus zero. Uh, it's for non-vehicle units, so it's just like a you know, like it's a pocketed blaster that you have somewhere hidden, right? And then you suddenly pull it out and you shoot first and then greet the dice. So. Um, when played using smuggle, so for that three resources, if you have yellow in your deck, attack with attached unit. Think of it of a bit like this is another copy of a rebel lieutenant. That is a three mana, three free, gives a rebel unit plus two attack, and then you attack with that unit. 
It's a little bit worse because you can give ECL effect to the lieutenant and then attack with two units at the same time, right? But it's like, it doesn't matter. This card is nuts because you can always resource it, right? It stays on the board, by the way. Not that it's going to happen or matter that much, but it might actually, right? So you get the bonus attack during your opponent's round as well. It stays there, right? So, which is better than Lieutenant uh, in this case, apart from having another body on the ground, right? But you never have to think, should I keep this card or resource it? Because you're always going to have it available. And if we're going to have more red cards that are going to be like boosting the aggro efficiency, because of those cards, we might actually see maybe IG-88 being in the meta game because we're gonna just gonna play all of those one drops and then we can still when we're gonna just play every single card every single time we're gonna play all our hand uh, as we're gonna play as many cards as possible each phase because we're gonna have so many one drops then you can still have cards in your resource role that are gonna matter which is important right this is like an incredibly efficient card for any um for any uh, aggro deck, and if we're gonna get more cards like this, and I'm assuming we're gonna get it, a lot more smuggle cards like uh, like this that are gonna empower the aggro mechanics, aggro decks can just efficiently play a double-handed deck, right? Because the cards in, in the hand and the, de and the board are gonna be counted as one, but then you're gonna still have the resource roll with cards that can be effective when you have used your, your entire hand. Because of that, also, maybe cards like, for example, Black 1, although that's, that's a rebel card when IG-88 is a villain, right? So it might not exactly be the same deck, but cards like maybe Black 1 might have a little bit more value because you're gonna just try to dump your hand as soon as possible and then replenish it with Black 1 while still having cards in your resource or possible, right, that you can still use. So you can sustain those rounds where you don't go yet to black one, maybe it's like round five, you still have something to play from your from a resource roll, even though you don't have many cards in hand, and then you replenish your hand with a black one, right? Just for the full force, I'm not saying it's incredibly powerful. Uh, and the last card that I want to talk about was not on this live stream, but it was shown on the social medias on, on, on Twitter uh, for Star Wars Unlimited. And it's a unit, I green black, crosshair, it's a unique unit, for four resources, two, six, trooper, which matters actually, right? It's a trooper and imperial, so it does count for, um, for for example, um, what is the name? Uh, the, um, General Tagger, right? General Tagger is a green, two mana, uh, two resource, uh, yeah, two resource, two two that gives buff to troopers. Uh, a little bit off curve, right? Because it's this is a two drop. The um, cross is a, is a four drop. But the point that I'm trying to make here that it might matter in the future a little bit more because we have the keyword. Uh, but his effect is pretty okay. The card doesn't really like scream, oh, it's broken, but it's pretty good. It's two mana, uh, sorry, four, four resources, two attack, six HP. And for two resources, it gets plus one attack this phase. And you can use that infinite amount of times as much mana as you have, as much resources as you have. And then for exhausting the card, you can deal damage equal to your power to the enemy ground unit. So you're sniping from afar and you're not getting any damage in return, right? So essentially that's why he's a sniper. And uh, so he has synergy with his, with his own effect. It will cost you initiative, like, because this is a lot of actions, a lot of actions. So... You're going to have to play from behind when it comes to the initiative. And when you have crosser, you might actually get bopped by a unit on the ground before you kill it, right? Because it's only two attack, right? So it's like kind of like first strike, but not really because you, your opponent doesn't get you back, right? Uh, but there are potential combos here. So, for example, first and foremost, uh, you can just have this guy with Director Krennic and whenever he's damaged, he gets plus one attack. So that's already is making him more powerful when it comes to exhausting him because he instantly just deals free damage to the ground unit and gets nothing in, uh, nothing back. And coincidentally, Director Krennic also has is blue, where there are two other cards that are very good with uh, the Crosser guy, and that is um, Electro Staff and Entrenched. Now Entrenched 
is a phenomenal card that can be both used on your opponent cards and your own cards, right? You can entrench a unit like, for example, a, a Boba Fett uh, Fire Spray, the Slave 1 ship, right? And then it can attack the base. And then you just remove it with a Super Laser Blast or something like that. That's one of the strategies that it can use, right? But now you can also use Entrenched because maybe you're playing Crosser. And then suddenly on uh, on, on five resources, this guy becomes a 5-9 that is very incredibly rough to remove. And you can just now exhaust him to kill almost every single unit that is being gonna is going to be, be thrown onto the ground, right? So you essentially will control that line that uh, with just crosser that is entrenched also kind of low wise fits right here because it's a sniper entrenched in, behind cover so that's kind of cool and you're going to be able to just literally delete one unit per phase because of him right also um this guy is playable with inquisitor because you can tap tap the inquisitor to untap this this uh this agent sorry this this uh, unit already right he has two power so he you can use that in with inquisitor so but that requires red then so you don't you can't really play entrenched but there are options electro staff is the second best i would say because uh it it gives you four attack which is not a set, not really the best because uh five is like a break point in my eyes which deletes most units in the game four doesn't get you there right but five from entrenched literally gets you there like it kills boba fett right it kills um it kills um bosk it uh, it kills essentially most of the five drops most of the six drops right uh electro stuff won't do that uh, but it will make it a little bit more resilient because it gives minus one attack to every single player, every single unit that will attack your um, your cross. But I would still prefer Entrench because you can both use it on your units and on opponent, opponent's units, so it's more flexible. But if you want to be a little bit spicy, Electro Staff is an option. Although I'm not a big fan of using upgrades in general because there are so many things that can just absolutely 2v1 you, like just a Vanquish... On, on 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 crossover and upgrade it's already two for one right a waylay is gonna be like oh my god you just you just ruined my entire game essentially right so i'm not saying this is gonna be meta game but there is a possibility that this guy might be played to some degree so it's a cool design by the way so that's about it for the new cards that we have seen uh today hope you guys enjoyed the video and um we'll speak with each other next time i hope and also oh by the way just wanted to say from the live stream of the VP of Marketing from Star Wars Unlimited, just wanted to say that at the, at the end of the video, he mentioned that it's going to be a reprint of Star Wars uh, Sparks of Rebellion before holidays, I'm assuming Christmas. Um, but he also said that set 2 has an apt print run than set 1, which is awesome because typically with card games, how it works is that first expansion has is like a, is like a test right and the second expansion or like the base set in the first expansion in this case the shadows of the galaxy is going to be the the first expansion right is going to have a higher interest if the game was successful with the first set so printing it more than the set one makes sense because there should be more players because all of the like majority of the people that bought set one are going to stay in the game because it's a new game, they're going to be excited for the second set, all of them are going to buy new cards, but then there's going to be a batch of new players that are going to join the community, and they will like to buy the new cards and the old cards. So there has to be more set 2 in the future being printed than set 1, because if they would print less, they would literally shoot themselves in the knee. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed the video, talk to you next time, if you have any questions, Leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and whatever else. Bye-bye.